special occasion, I'm, I'm exceedingly glad to be here on uh, Pastor Bud's first anniversary. What an awesome, awesome uh, place to be. I wouldn't want to be in any other place this morning, but here, let me uh, give a blessed word uh, over you today. And First Lady, and truly, uh, this is a, 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 a trip that I've always enjoyed making coming to Glow Ministry. It's always been a pleasure. I've always felt good here, and I know it's not going to be any different today. Amen. You know, you know, God, God is so awesome. Yes, and, and we don't always know what he's doing and why he does what he does. But every, in everything that's happening around us is for a reason. And I want you to know today that you're here for a reason today. And it's to celebrate. Somebody say Celebrate. You know, one year uh, that I was reading in the Bible, uh, uh, Paul and Silas was, went out and they began to teach the people. And the Bible said, after one year, uh -huh, they were called Christians. First at Antioch. After one year of teaching. And so I know that there's somebody in here today that have been here throughout, throughout this year. And you have been able to see the Lord working through this man of God. And you are not the same today because you were here on the first day and you're still here today. Give him praise one more time. I want you to pay attention to a couple of verses here. Let me see if I can find it in my Bible. Somebody say you should have had it already, right? No, but I, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. I have it already, okay? All right. Um, um, this is for, for, for you, Pastor, yes, and, and, and for the church, and for all of us. I, I, want, I, I want to pay attention to what Isaiah says here in verse number 29. It's important. He says, he gives strength yes. all right, to the weary yes. and increases power yes. to the weak. Anybody here in here can relate to that? Yeah. He gives strength uh, to the weary and increases power to the weak. And, and then, then, then I like I like verse 39. He said, But those in my Bible said who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Uh, they will soar on wings like eagles. Yes. They will run and not grow weary, and they will walk and not faint. Right. I also like the way we say it in the King James Version. Yes. It says, but they that wait on the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Uh -huh. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not faint. You know, I, I like to say, 
But good things come to those who wait on the Lord. But good things come to those who wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to talk about that today. I want to talk about, and I want to tell you today, Reverend, that good things come to those who wait on the Lord. All right, and, and I want to lay I want to lay a little foundation here, okay? Can, can, I, can I take a little time to lay a foundation? Okay, I want to lay a little foundation. Today we live in a world where everything has to happen right now. Okay, we live we live in a, in a world where we can take that phone. I see people with them already, and you can punch something in that phone, and you can get information out of California right now. Somebody else can point to get information out of Los Angeles. Somebody can take that phone and get info, get to speak to somebody in Afghanistan right now. See, and, and, and what has happened to us is that, brother, we've gotten used to getting what we want right now. And so if we can't get it right now, uh -huh, uh, you know, we, we lose our patience. We, we don't have time to wait on anything anymore, not for a long time. See, we don't want to wait on God to take a long time to answer our prayers. Am I right about that? See, when we bow down and pray, we expect the Lord to hear us now. And as Isaiah said in, in 65, 24, he said, when while you're speaking, I'm hearing before you can get, can get up, before you can answer, before you can say anything, you are I've already heard. And if I heard your prayer, then I've already answered. So we are expecting God to move in our life right now. But the Bible says right here, but they that wait on the Lord shall, and every time he says shall in this verse, it gives them something special to plan our feet in. But they that wait on the Lord shall, all right? But but I want I, I want to say one other thing here. One other thought that came to my mind as I was studying this text here, it said, now, 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 there are those all right, Pastor, that you're going to have in your congregation. People that, that are in your church. Folks that are going to be by your side. Now, this is the good thing here uh, on this text that I want to bring to you. There are going to be some people in here who have gone through and have been tested and been tried. And we know that the trying of our faith work in patience. Now, can I get a little bit of this? See, there are some folks in here that's been through some stuff. Uh -huh. And they know that what they've been through, they could not have gotten out of it if they had not waited on the Lord. And so as a pastor, I'm trying to say to you today that you're going to have to wait on God uh, when to answer your prayer. And all the time, he's not going to show you what he wants you to do. You're going to have to leave where you are uh -huh, in order to get where God wants to take you. As long as you stay where you are, the scenery going to remain the same. All right, everything going to look the same. But when you begin to move according to what the Spirit of God is telling you, things are going to change in your life. They may not change fast as you want them to change, but they will change. You understand, you really, Pastor, don't know what you can go through until you leave where you are. I wish I had a witness in here today. If you don't know how much you can take unless somebody start putting some on you. See, and, and until you, 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 your faith has been tried, until you begin to leave where you are and, and endure some things that you have never a, a dreamed of enduring before, until that happened in your life, you would never know what the Lord would do for you. I wish I had a witness here today. See, you can listen to people talk about how much they can take all you want, but until they have been through something, uh huh. They don't know nothing. I wish they had a witness to that. See, 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 you don't know what you can bear. You, 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 you have never had to bear any burdens. You, you don't know what what you can take until somebody, somebody that giving you a whole lot of stuff that you don't want and have not, have not had. See, you don't know these things until God puts you through something. I believe today that everybody in here, if you are not in it right now, you're on your way to it. Uh, and if you just got out of it, you ought to say thank you, Jesus. Because see, I can tell you, as long as you're living in this life, in this world, something is going to change in your life to make you something that you've never been before. Yeah, you, you really, you really, my brothers and sisters, you really don't know 
what a person is going through that has lost a mother and father and a child. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're feeling. But see, but see, God don't want you always to experience everything that everybody else experienced, but he wants you to learn. I say learn from what you see. Because we know that whatever's happening in New York and California can happen right here in Millersville. And so if you're not ready, when things come, you're going to be devastated at the result of it. Sometimes God tests us by moving us to a point where uh, we have no other option but to wait on it. Sometimes he put us in stuff that we have to stay in, no matter how we might feel, no matter what we say said about it. But the Bible tells us Pastor, they that wait on the Lord. Uh, they, 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 don't, don't forget that. And that goes not just for the pastor, but everybody else. But they that wait on the Lord. Yeah. Somebody else say yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, 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 I've come with good news today because, this, because of this text right here. Isaiah 40. Which leads us to recognize that good things come from the Lord. Y'all, y'all better get that. That good things come from the Lord. Uh huh. And, and once we uh, recognize the fact that we are in Him and He is in us, that makes us good things as well. And the Bible always it has assured us that a good tree gonna bear good fruit. Uh, a, a, a good tree cannot. They are bad fruit. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm encouraged in knowing and saying to you today that good things come to those who wait on the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. If you have not come to your waiting point, if you have not uh, bared some burden that you know that you could not have born except that God was with you, if you have not gone through something that you know that your neighbor could not go through, but you got through it. If you've not done that, uh, just keep on living. Keep on letting folks say happy birthday to you. See, yeah, from somewhere uh, down, down the road, something is going to happen in your life that's going to change you forever. I wish I had a witness in there today. Yeah, I can give you a testimony after what testimony of what God has done, how God has taken me through stuff and got me to where I am today. And if it had not been for the Lord, yeah, most of us uh, want to say that we have Christ in our life. Most of us want to say that He is leading and guiding us. But my brothers and sisters, uh, there is a thing that causes us to get to the place where we know that we're being led and guided by Him of the troubles that we, we face in this life. But Isaiah says, "They that wait on the Lord." And the rest of that verse gives us four shells. And each one of these shells is in fact a divine accommodation for our assurance. Uh huh. Every time God says shell in this verse, he is assuring you of something because you are able to wait. Uh -huh. He's assuring you of something because you're able to wait. He says, but 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 they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And if you and if you you record and write and notes or whatever, that's rejuvenate. See, if you are waiting on God, He will renew your strength. And let me ask you today, is there anybody here, uh-huh, who has had their backs against the wall? Is there anybody here? Have been in a place that you know you are not prepared in, and you know that if something happens that you're going to be in a mess. Is there anybody here today has gone as far as you thought you could go and when you got to that point you went even further. Is there anybody in the house today that had some stuff that happened in your life that you know you couldn't have but God <laughs> renewed your strength. But God, come here, Joe. Uh -huh. Joe, Joe lost everything he had. But, 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 but Joe waited on the Lord. And somebody read the last chapter of the book of Joe, where he said, Joe, God said, because Joe was able to wait, he gave Joe, Joe a glory soul. Uh, yeah, 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 good things come to those who wait. He, Joe knew something that all of us need to know right now. Joe knew that good things come to those who wait. And that's why I go there. I'm going to wait until a change comes. 
Uh, the Lord heals and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satan, Satan can bring havoc upon us uh, Monday through Friday. Monday through Saturday. He can bring havoc upon us. He can make us uh, almost deny that we know the Lord. But, 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 but when Sunday morning comes, see, there's something about Sunday. There's something about the word Sunday that changes everything. Because some folks know that when I get in the house of God, I'm going to meet somebody that knows the Lord. And the Bible says that we well, two or three, uh, agree on earth about anything. Oh, I'm trying to say something to the church today. I'm trying to say something to the church today. Yeah, yeah, Matthew, Matthew 18 and 19. Somebody, you, you want it? He said, where well, two or three on earth, not anywhere else, but right here on earth, agree on anything and ask my father, they will tell you. I wish I had a witness to this. But see, you just got to be every way on the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, when, 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 when I got up this morning, the first thing on my mind was getting ready. To come out to the house of prayer. When I woke up this morning, when I went to bed last night, the thing that went on my mind would be say, Lord, use me uh, tomorrow to say a word that's going to help somebody. That was on my mind. You see, I believe today that somebody is going to leave me a little different from what you came in. Because you're going to know today that if you wait on the Lord, good things are coming your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good things. Are coming your way. See, see, see. Let, let, let me just say this too now. See, when I got to the, when when you get in the house of prayer and when 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 the Holy Spirit began to do His thing, see, you need to leave people alone in that situation. Uh, see, when 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 you get into your worship, that's something that you ought to you and God got going on. You said you and the Holy Spirit got going on. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 have to be careful sometimes and, and who you sit beside in church. Because these some folks, they just can't stand a lot of noise. They, they can't stand a lot of moving around. And, and, and you know, sometimes I'm like that. I mean, I'm not one of these holy rollers, but, but sometimes, you know, I, I want to do my own thing. You understand what I'm saying, right? So see, see, in order for you to get your blessing, uh -huh, do you got to be ready to do whatever God wants you to do. Uh -huh. You gotta be ready. See, you you got you got to have an open mind and an open heart. Uh -huh. And that's why an usher should not bother folks uh -huh, when the Lord is doing something with it. The yeah, usher should not be fanning folks and putting their hands on folks and rubbing their backs and holding their head. Leave them alone. Let the Lord do his thing. Whatever he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so when, I, when, when, when I came in here today, I said, I said, Lord, I need you and nobody but you to touch me where nobody else can touch me at. I need you to do something in me today that will help me to be the person that you want me to be. Now, everybody in the church might not understand it. Some folks might not like it, but Lord, you have your way today. Hey, that wait on the Lord. Shall yeah. renew their strength. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. And, 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 then, and then next he said, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh huh. Now, 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 now that's the elevation. I, 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 I know, I know that there is somebody in here right now. Uh huh. Pastor, uh, that, 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 that know that God is able. Uh huh. To lift them, uh huh, above what's going on in their life. I want somebody to know today that you don't have to take care of and handle everything in your life. Uh, sometimes you just have to put it out there and leave it alone. You put it out there and let God. You take your hands off it and let God. Yeah, and when I'm when I'm saying that, I mean that that's for real. See, as long as you got your hand on it. God is not going to do anything with it. I remember reading in Jesus' first, first miracle. Uh, uh, Mary said, they are out of wine. And Jesus said, what have I got to do with it? What they got to do with me? Uh -huh. And Mary didn't say anything else. She just walked away and left him alone. 
See, when she walked away and left him alone, then Jesus took over and he got the business taken care of. He took fill up the pots uh, and fill them up with water. There was clay pot. Fill them up with water. And then take some out and take it to the guests. I want to tell somebody today, see, you can't tell the Lord what to do. You can't tell him how to do it. And Mary didn't tell Jesus nothing. She didn't tell him what you want. Well, two or three on earth are gathered together and agree on anything. I will make it uh, true. Let it happen. So my brothers and sisters, God is able to uh, elevate you. He's able to move you above your pain, above your problems, above your headaches, above your situation. God is able to do some things that can't nobody do but him through his son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. He's able to make you something that you've never been before. Somebody in here but on your way to becoming something that you've never been before. And you ought to say thank you, God. Let me offer a bit of advice. Uh, go to church. Uh, Jesus said, when you go to church and you have that freedom to do the thing that he would have you to do, then you're going to be blessed in the church. You're going to be blessed when you leave the church. You're going to be blessed wherever you go because wherever you go, I'm going to be there before you get there. I'm waiting on you. He's waiting on us. Yeah, he's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Somebody else say, thank you, God. Jesus, Jesus has a way of moving in the midst of your situation. And before you know it, God has lifted you. I don't know what it is about God. I don't know why he loved me. Look, he does. I don't know why he, he put me in places that I could never be in. It is happening. I don't know why he chose me. But I thank God. For everything that he's done. I thank God for what he's doing right now. And I thank God for what he's going to do. Because I know that right now, God. Ain't through with me yet. Ain't through with me yet. Ain't through with me yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can be in the right place. In the midst of one of your worst situations. But when the Lord is with you, everything going to be all right. Uh -huh. you, you can be... Uh, in a place where nobody can understand how you're making it, Pastor, but because you're waiting on the Lord, uh huh, you know that you shall, that God will shall renew your strength. So we don't have to worry no more. You just have to let go and let it, let God. And all you have to do is just do what you've been doing. I saw this morning. Is just stand up and give Him praise. And say hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. Because I know that some say we can may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. So I can stand here today and say glory. Hallelujah. I can say thank you, Jesus. Because I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me. So Pastor, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. He has something better for you. Somebody say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody, somebody in here right now. Uh, need the Lord and understand that only he can do what needs to be done in your life. God wants you to do what the eagle does. And, then, and this is what the eagles do. Alright? Eagles don't use any and all of their strength to get above that situation. To mind up with wings as eagles. Eagles don't use all of their strength to get above stuff. You see, the eagle, my brothers and sisters, just stretches out its wings and let the wind get beneath the wind. And the more wind get beneath the wind, the higher the eagle will fly. So I want to tell somebody here today that's praising God, that, that loves the Lord, that knows that he's able. I want to tell somebody here today to invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Invite him to come in because the Holy Spirit will lift you above your problems. The Holy Spirit will lift you above the stuff. Your, your home situation. He'll lift you beyond any and everything in your life. Somebody ought to give God praise right now. Because if the Spirit of God had not lifted you above the stuff, you would have fallen down and been smothered by the stuff that you that was before you. But because the Spirit of God was there, 
to raise you up. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God's spirit is everywhere. Oh, he's in here today. The, the Bible already told us, right? Where two or three on earth are gathered together, touching and agreeing on anything, he's going to be right here. Give me two people that know that the Lord will. Give me two more people. They can run. And not get rid of me. That's acceleration. God knows how to take you past whatever you're dealing with. Uh huh. Whatever has come in your life has only come to pass. Not only has it come to pass, it's come to make you better. It's come to make you strong. It come to open your mind up that you need the Lord in your life. Whatever it has come, it come to help you be that person that you've never been before. And I thank God for that. I I you know I, I look at some photographs sometimes of my own self and, and I see the transition how God has moved in my life. And I, and that's the way I feel about him working his spirit working. It only comes to transition you, to move you from one state of maturity to another. I can look at them high school pictures and I, I can recognize and think about what was on my mind then. And then I look at the pictures today and I, I see what's on my mind today. And I say, thank you, God, for the transition. Yeah, for moving me from where I was to where I am. For moving me to a place where I wasn't used at all in doing kingdom work. To a place where all I think about is, Lord, what else do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah. Whatever has come, has come to pass. Brother, don't ask our witness. I wish I had a witness today. The storm comes. Uh, and then sometimes it rocks your world. But storm don't last always. Uh, my daddy used to tell her to say that we, even when the storm comes, trees are blown down. Houses are torn up. But but the roots, I said roots, are still left in the ground. Oh, and the roots that left in the ground, they're going to come up and produce again another tree. Come on, thank you. And that same come. Oh, that's what happened right here, right here. Yeah, the tree was blown down, but the root was planted. And the root is coming up. Lord, and look at it now. Come and say thank you, God. Yeah. Don't know about you. But I just know the Lord. I know he don't make no mistakes in anything that he does. So I always understand. But I can say, Lord, I'm trusting in you. So I believe today, uh, as we celebrate today, that God had this plan in the beginning. In the beginning that you were going to be here. In the beginning that we were going to celebrate your one year anniversary today. So we celebrate you today. We say, Lord, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. Come because we know that good things come to those who win. You're not there yet. You're just on the way. Good things are ahead of you. Don't, 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 don't get worried. Don't get weary. Oh, when things don't look right. Because God is able. And we know that they that wait on him shall renew their truth. Somebody else said, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, they shall walk in our pain. Yes. Oh, everything going to be all right. Yes. And so as we come to this point of closing, I just want to say to you today, I know that today is a great day. And I know that God has already planted some seeds that are going to produce a great fruit in your life. You're a young man, and you have a great future. And so I'm just praying today that God continue to bless you with blessings from on high. I'm praying today that God continue to use you right here in Baldwin County, in ministry of Georgia, to continue to change life, make a way for the those that are lost. Come on, say thank you, God. We thank you for what you've done. What you doing? What you gonna give us praise right now? Good thing. Come to those who wait on the Lord. Uh -huh. Good things. And it comes to all of us. All of us. We are standing. We're standing. And a place where God can do great things to us. First lady, uh, 
He needs you to just be there for him. Uh, glow ministry, you're not going to always understand everything. But I, I want y'all all to record. I want you all to record this. Matthew 18 and 19. I want y'all recording. I want you to get it right now. I want somebody to read it for me. And see, this is for the church. Pastor can't do it all by himself. Can't, can't do it all by himself. All right? Somebody got it? Yes, sir. All right, read it for me. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. I want y'all to just, I, I want you to just begin to read that and meditate on it for your church. Amen. I, I, I'm, going, I'm, I'm, I'm making that a verse that we're going to do and meditate on in our church. The church is going through hell right now because we can't get two or three people on earth to agree on anything. They got to see it in order to believe it. But see, the Holy Spirit is not something that you can see and not something that you can bottle up, a basket up, a sack up. And here, God ain't speaking through everybody in the church. He ain't telling you what he won't done. He's telling the man of God. You got to understand that he operates through the man of God. He said, I'm going to give you pastors according to my own heart. That's what God said. So you got to believe your pastor. You got to trust in your pastor. And, 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 and God ain't going to let no pastor lead you in the wrong direction for long. See, he already given us examples of how he handled pastors that don't do things that he won't do. God know how to take him out. You don't have to take him out. All you need to do is pray and, and support. So I'm saying to you, Pastor, congratulations again. You know I love you. And you know we're going to be here for you. Anything that we can do to help make this ministry go. We're going to do that. Okay, come on. Come on. All right. All right. Let's give God a praise offering here one more time. Uh, and I want you to know that that that, that we know yes. that if you can believe what I just told us today, good things come, come to those who wait on the Lord. Yes. Shall renew their strength. All right. If you believe that, then you take that. Yes. Make that your badge yes, that you use Hallelujah. in going forward. Yes. And I want church, y'all grab on to Matthew 18 and 19. Yes. yes. Agree. Agree. We don't care what it looks like. We don't care what it looks like. As long as we follow God's word, it's going to be right. Can't be wrong. I, mean, I, can, I, I can look at where we came from in the beginning. All because we had some people that agreed. We had some people that agreed. So we went from a building on 500, 500 Wilkinson to a little building over there that used to be a, a signal shop or something, right? Yep. A paid shop. Okay. All right. Paid shop. Okay. To the building that we're in today because. Okay. God didn't do this yet. Let me go. I'm going to make a job.